known to the West as Mehmed II, he was an Ottoman Sultan, and in the time of his rule he would accomplish one of the greatest achievements in history, conquering Constantinople. This great achievement was no accident, rather it was the result of comprehensive planning and years of religious development. This video explores Mehmed's military genius through his war preparations and how he earned the famous title of Muhammad al-Fatih or Mehmed the Conqueror. From an early age, Muhammad al-Fatih showed signs of great leadership skills through his experiences as a governor in Amasya and showed enthusiasm for the pursuit of knowledge. His mentor, Muhammad Shamsuddin bin Hamza, was an advisor to the Sultan from a young age, teaching him the religious sciences, Islamic history, language and prophetic character. He also inspired Muhammad al-Fatih to conquer Constantinople. However, this was no easy task as Constantinople had withstood many sieges and attacks for over 800 years because of its formidable defences. Even Muslims of the past tried and failed to do so. What set Muhammad al-Fatih apart from his predecessors is his genius pre-war strategy. He signed peace treaties with Serbia, Hungary and Bulgaria to uphold ceasefire during the forthcoming siege. He even increased taxes on sovereign states and regulated the trading sector to secure a war fund. The military strategy took the majority of Muhammad's focus. He was able to amass hundreds of thousands of foot soldiers, as well as cavalry, gunmen and janissaries from all across the Muslim world. He also equipped his army with the latest warfare technology which had not been owned by any other nation except for the Ottomans. This was a giant cannon that was essential to taking down the Theodosian walls. Mehmed took no risks. He would sketch his strategies on maps with great care, with some reports stating that he took usually several days to complete his plans, spotting any flaws and weaknesses. He analysed previous sieges on Constantinople, trying to understand their flawed tactics. The majority of leaders used land strategies to try and capture the city. The Byzantines were not affected by this, seeing that they used the sea for trade routes and war supplies. To bypass this issue, he positioned his foot soldiers and cavalrymen on land while his navy was stationed at the sea to barricade the ships carrying aid and war supplies from other Christian nations. And so on the 6th of April, 1453, the siege of Constantinople had begun. Wave after wave, the Ottomans attacked the city. Their massive cannons blasted the Theodosian walls, but with little effect as they were inaccurate and required three hours to reload, giving the Byzantines enough time to rebuild the damage. The assaults made by Ottoman infantry were repeatedly repelled and pushed back by the defenders. On the other side of the siege, the Ottoman naval fleet encountered another issue as the Byzantines had stretched a massive chain across the Golden Horn Bay. This prevented the Ottoman navy from attacking the walls from the sea. All these problems were troubling Mehmed. He knew that if he were to be victorious, he would have to adapt to the changing conditions. Muhammad al-Fatih ordered the construction of a road of greased logs to drag his ships over the hill into the Golden Horn, bypassing the chain barrier. The defenders were forced to disperse part of their forces to defend the sea walls along the Golden Horn. The Byzantines were being overwhelmed at several different points. Panic ensued and the Byzantine defences collapsed. And surely enough, Ottoman flags were seen on top of a small gate. Finally, after a 53-day siege, on the 29th of May 1453, Sultan Mehmed had conquered Constantinople. Following the conquest, Mehmed protected both Jews and Christians and respected their rights as citizens of Constantinople. By conquering this great city, the Sultan had established a new frontier for the spread of Islam in the West, having lasting impacts on the world until today. Muhammad al-Fatih showed us that in order to accomplish anything, not only do you need to rely on Allah, but also to put in the effort yourself. May we learn from his achievements and may Allah bless this noble Sultan.